So just some uh, brief slides here to start with uh, to get you up to speed on the goat industry. Breeds of goats. The different kinds of uh, contributions they make to the agricultural industry. Their browsing ability. Um, and when we get to this point of the discussion, uh, folks, you need to keep in mind, at least my opinion is, how many animals will stand on their back legs and take care of brush, convert that to a high quality consumable protein, and we don't need the corn. We don't need the soybean meal. We can keep that in the human uh, food chain and not, uh, not even utilize that if, uh, if we go this uh, route. And thinking about that presentation this morning, um, to me, there's a, a variety of roles for goats and uh, the contributions they can make. And I'm going to speed through some of these uh, slides here because the real thrust of the discussion uh, I'd like to get to is uh, lying ahead here. All sorts of contributions they make to biomedical research. It's, uh, there's a lot going on there, folks. Many are small flock producers. Youth are involved in them. They make super youth projects. Um, if any of you are following the uh, 4-H and FFA uh, stock shows, you'll know that the tremendous increase in goats in those projects um, as you see in these pictures here. Now, when we get to these products, again, think about the possibilities and, and kind of, if you kind of merge this part of the presentation with the, uh, uh, the, the banker this morning that talked about that uh, uh, and I have a presentation that I do on that as well about that Economist article about the uh, population explosion that's coming, the tremendous need for increase in food across the world, um, how we produce that food, how we minimize waste, uh, sources for that. I'm submitting to you here is one of the great possibilities uh, for that, uh, a source for that food, particularly worldwide. The components of goat meat to other meats, uh, it's, it's a health food, folks. It really is. And I'm a sheep producer also. I'm, I have no particular bias towards this over the other species in terms of their contribution to um, this. But I'm here to tell you that goats have a tremendous amount of production capability and and possibilities for contribution. We're seeing significant increases in demand for the meat in this country as one of the uh, uh, fastest sectors of our population in growth are the ethnic sectors. And they're the ones that are consuming meat. When people ask me who eats goat meat, I say everybody but us. The fibers, soaps, skin care, the role they can play in the environment. All of these are really um, important contributions to economies of the world, including ours here in the U.S. Now, to stop here for a minute, here's where we get to the real thrust of the discussion today and where I'd like to... Uh, your thoughts and your input in terms of how we can uh, we can make some changes. Look at the cattle situation, the swine, the chickens, 
then come over here and look at sheep and goats in terms of uh, the drugs that are labeled for use in these two species. Does that not put us at a significant disadvantage in production? We've got a variety of drugs that could greatly increase our capability of production, give us more comparative advantage or assist us in gaining a comparative advantage as, uh, as we move through some of these, uh, implementing some of these, were they available? <clears throat> so we get to the extra label drug use program and, and uh, uh, well, there's kind of a gray area where we can do some things, but look where that shifts the burden to, and look at the uh, challenges that accompany that, and the, the differences that are there for some producers when they work with different veterinarians. I continually hear of some producers who uh, go to some veterinarians and they can get the help, and they go to others and they say, no, we can't, we're not comfortable with that. And that's nothing against the veterinarian. What it does is, is uh, give a challenge for producers. This program here, the Minor Use Animal Drug Program, folks, here's, here's a program that uh, we need some help with. Here's a program that has some possibilities for help. And as we... Uh, Mentioned in this last presentation, the uh, the TIC, the, the Texas TIC program, cattle TIC program, and Lisa, you want to talk a couple of seconds about the role of that uh, of this program in that uh, uh, issue? As you're kind of on that front line for that. Yeah, sure. So right now, the Mind Use Animal Drug Program is doing a project looking at the um, cattle um, tick fever eradication program in Southern Texas. And this program is able to do that because it's addressing a minor use in a major species. This is the only program that exists that allows a label claim for something like that. Um, and the um, way that the medication is being administered isn't legal through extra um, label drug use. So if this program goes away, the minor use animal drug program, there really will be no mechanism for uh, providing a means for getting drug approval for such uses. The pharmaceutical companies don't have the economic incentive to do so. Um, and um, as it currently exists, um, I don't think that the drug companies in the United States are interested um, from an economic perspective in getting label claims for minor species or uh, minor use of major species. Thank you. The FDA approval process is, is uh, as we know, very expensive and time consuming. And it, it uh, from a producer standpoint, it appears to move at a snail's pace in terms of how fast things are able to be approved and made available uh, for, for use. This easy breed cedar, um, has been available in Australia for I don't know how many years. A long, long time. They, those producers were using it successfully and and look where we're at with it. It's just starting to get to, uh, get here and become available for us. We brought in uh, ET folks from Australia and, and such for years and, and uh, the, the way they were able to uh, do the programs was only through using these uh, these items. Mum's legislation. This is uh, um, an opportunity to do some early marketing to recover some of the investment costs. Provides an, an alternative legal means to market drugs, and uh, this is one that uh, most directly applies to us as minor species. There's some products or in projects in in progress. The Cedars, Draxon, New Floor. Well, it's great they're in progress. It'd be uh, wonderful if that list were substantially longer. 
we really are at a great disadvantage and I include, I think I can safely include the sheep industry with it. I know as a sheep producer, I feel uh, not much different that I do about it with as being a goat producer. We are at a significant disadvantage and uh, uh, because these other countries like Australia, um, look how many more products they have available to them. And as they come out of Australia, uh, that's where my competitors are in both goat and lamb. And I'm not sure that we can blame the, Australia on being too hasty or on not being thorough in their uh, approvals. I believe that uh, um, they are out competing us in that arena. Again, as you look at this list, um, across uh, Europe, Eastern, heading into Eastern Europe there with Romania and some of those other countries, um, look where we're at. And again, the comparative disadvantage that we have in this country as producers. As I said, cedars have been available in New Zealand and Australia. Um, those guys are been using them as common as uh, as anything over there for a long period of time. <clears throat> now here's uh, part of the key. There's no funding for this project, as you know. Uh, I presume all of you are certainly uh, familiar with that, probably more so than I am in many respects. There's no funding in the current budget for the Farad. So, as you look at this now, how can we get something changed? This is the part where I'd like to get to a, a brief discussion. Uh, ran off most of the attendees here, but but how can we make a change? How can we get something to to happen here? Um, I uh, you know I I feel pretty strongly, folks, that that uh, we need to do something. And uh, as it's through ASI or through the American Goat Federation or through other avenues. What, uh, what is it that we can do uh, to make uh, uh, a difference in this regard? How can Dubois help us? How can the Sheep Experiment Station help us? And, uh, and what are the avenues that are best for us to pursue to, to get something accomplished here? Um, I visited with Paul earlier this morning for a few minutes about this and and uh, he's had significantly more experience at this than I have, and, and uh, so I'm not here to tell you how it's done, I'm here to ask how can we do it best and how can we move forward in some kind of a united way um, to get this uh, remedied to a certain extent. I don't know that we'll immediately jump to where Australia is, that's probably uh, a little far reaching, but is there not something we can do to get uh, the program on track so that as producers we can be competitive. There's uh, some of the folks that uh, uh, are in appropriations, ag appropriations. I presume that most of those will get uh, visits as we go back to the hill visits for ASI and, and uh, the Goat Federation can certainly back that and support that effort. Senate folks. Many of those are from the east, but uh, still. Farm bill, what about that? Avenue. And there's not just uh, sheep and goats affected. There's all these other species out there as well. Do we need to build a team a little larger, form some other alliances? And if so, how do we do that? What about uh, cattle? And here again is the cattle tick fever issue. Tell me, how can we proceed? What are your thoughts about it? <laughs>